buddy Eric C. Con. He gets the job done. Eric C. Con. We we'll always make this stop in lovely Allen, Kentucky. How you doing? I'm doing good. We're gonna go see Grindhouse. Yeah, uh, we're gonna be one of the few that actually sees the movie opening weekend. Apparently, and I was—I've just been informed about this. Grindhouse only placed fourth in the overall weekend box office and got beat by shit like "Are We Done Yet?" with Ice Cube. <laughs> Are we done yet? And uh, Meet the Robinsons, whatever the hell that is—I have no idea. What in the hell is Meet the Robinsons? This is the first time I've heard of it. I honestly don't know. Yeah. Is that anything like Meet the Applegates? Could be. And almost got beat by the Reaping, which I was just joking about, like, you know, on the show. So could it be possibly the length? Or could it be that the promotions and previews confuse people? Or could it be that people just don't give a shit about Tarantino and Rodriguez? I don't know. It could be a combination of all of those. But we're going to check it out because we've actually heard all positive things about the film. A lot of people complain about Tarantino's chapters not as good as Rodriguez's, which I can sort of expect because you know, Tarantino thinks that Eli Roth makes good horror films. Yeah, I, there's no way you can keep me away from this movie. This is the only one film that I've been really looking forward to since probably Land of the Dead. I mean, that's been two years. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't let us down like Land of the Dead did, though. Uh, you know, as I said a few weeks ago, I don't think that uh, uh, people need to have too high of expectations for the movie. And evidently, uh, you know, it delivers from what I've heard. So, uh, West Virginia fucking sucks. Yeah, that's just a random observement. Well, this guy from West Virginia as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're fucking hicks over there, man. Oh. Fucking stupid redneck. Fucking dumb hillbilly son of a bitch is what they are in West Virginia. Yeah. My opinion. He and Britain. Fags over. Fucking, you know how stupid they fucking talk to. I know. If I have to hear that fucking accent one more time in my life, I'm gonna puke in my salt. Just completely ignorant. They sound ignorant. I can't believe that you know people are around in the United States today that actually talks like that way. It's amazing. It is over here. Yeah, but. Grindhouse, going back to Grindhouse, it has a all star cast in it. People like Michael Bean. You got Rose McGowan. You got Marley Shelton, who is titty licious. Danny Trejo, the motherfucker. I think Bruce Willis is even in the same <laughs> Yeah, movie. Bruce is in this movie, that's right. Yeah. One of our favorite people, Tom Savini, who we actually had on the show. We interviewed him almost a year ago on Dead Pit. You got Mr. Terminator himself, Michael Bean. Who I already said. Did you say Michael Bean? Yeah, I said Michael Bean. Anyway, though, there's a ton of people in the movie. Actually, there's a Goonies alumni in the movie, too. Uh, Josh Brolin is actually in the movie. That's true. So, uh... I know Freddy Rodriguez is in the movie, but I had no idea who the fuck that guy was before. This movie's a... Yeah, is he related to Robert Rodriguez as his nephew or something? Probably. Yeah. Did anybody say Kurt Russell? Kurt Russell's in the movie. I just said it. <laughs> Kill him. Yeah. So, uh, in addition to that, though, we are prepared. We've got pillows in the bag. I've got, you know, some medicine to numb my ass. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about the film after we get out. But it's, I don't know, we might be dead by the time we get out. It's three and a half hours long, and we might starve to death. Dehydrated, it's yeah, I might have to get up and piss and shit a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you will, actually. You could just wear a diaper and just shit all over yourself. In the I could, I could, you know. Like that astronaut woman? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if people around me would appreciate that, though. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's some toxic material. Yeah, it might be bad. It's but bad. maybe we can get a shot of the fun athletic guys again. I know that people yeah, are I'm big sure. fans of the, of the FAGs. It's a little bit cold out today, so I don't know if the fun athletic guys will be out in full force like they were right. convertible last time, but we'll try it. So, until we get to the theater, I'm a creepy Kentuckian. And I am Uncle Bill. We'll see you later. Hmm. 
since we're driving through lovely uh, Eastern Kentucky going to pot all day, I just wanted to let everyone who watches these little you know, video episodes take a listen to what kind of radio stations we have available to us in this lovely part of the country. Here we go. I'm Rat, off the chain. Some Christian music. Alright. Some Bo Hager Jr. Alright, Liam. Liam. And I said, oh no, we have not. Female country. They struck late in the game and they did it on home run tower. Sports. Sports. I wrote, and finally, the Bible won't say what she said, but I'm just getting That's my That's my favorite station. Oh, 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 Standing here by myself, by, by God, I just don't understand. What by God, I know, was, <laughs> I know He delivered me from sin. I, I so that's the special Easter edition of uh, Eastern Kentucky Radio. Here, I hope y'all enjoyed that. We have about five regular radio stations, and at least four of them are either country or something like that. Taking with grief, uh, and her burden got so heavy that uh, she just stoops down. Uh, and then. <laughs> See how great the theater is today. See if anybody likes to cry and dance. I'll do it to for you. My God. You got me fucking hitting me. That's, that's going to be a new record for like... Easter years. Sunday, nobody wants to go and support their local theater. Oh, sure, you'll go support the Lord, but you won't support Drive House. That's a fucking joke. Oh, God. At least we'll have a good party spot over here. Yeah. At least maybe there'll be any loud mouth fucking kids. Well, they'll be kids. Maybe they'll go say, are we done yet, then leave me the hell alone. I doubt it. Okay. Uncle Bill's final thought. We can't lose hell. It was called The Grindhouse. Theaters that played back-to-back -back movies featuring uncensored sexuality and hardcore thrills. Now, Tarantino and Rodriguez are bringing The Grindhouse back. With two explosive feature films. First... They're stealing biochemical weapons. When the laws of science are broken, the last hope for humanity rests in the hands of a few. Doc Block, his prescription, pain. We're gonna lose the arm, Joe. What do you mean, lose arm? My arm? Dakota, one hot mama who knows the score. If anyone comes to the door, I want you to run. What if it's dad? Hello, baby. Especially if it's your dad. El Rey, cross him and it's lights out. And Jerry Darling. I made you something. She tastes like trouble. With an attitude to boot. In Robert Rodriguez, Planet Terror. Then. Buckle up, because a new kind of terror is coming at 200 miles per hour. Ladies, we're gonna have some fun. There are a few things as fetching as a bruised ego on a beautiful angel. Is that cowboy wisdom? I'm not a cowboy, Pam. I'm a stuntman. Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof. This car is 100% death proof. Only to get the benefit of it, honey, you really need to be sitting in my seat. Two 
adrenaline-fueled roller coasters. One ticket to ride. In two and a half hours of pure dynamite, planet terror and death proof. Only at the Grindhouse. Oh God, it's not time. I don't think anybody's gonna be able to see this. <laughs> I can't see shit on that. <laughs> anyway, though, I guess we're we're done with the movie now. We've seen the movie. What the hell? Are you some bitches bitching about on the message board. That's what I want to know. Seriously. Well, I guess I can kind of understand about the, the Tarantino episode because it does get a little bit gratuitous with him throwing like fucking pop culture references in there all the time. Yeah. And letting those women talk for like 30 minutes straight. That's true. But still, like, all in all, that episode of the film was just as good, I thought, as Planet Terror was. Yeah, I think part of the reason people didn't enjoy it as much was it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really a horror movie, I don't think. It was a completely unique concept, though. Like, yeah. like, I thought it was going to be something like Christine, but it was nothing like that at all, really. Yeah. But let's 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 start, okay? First of all, I'm pissed that they didn't have the goddamn Halloween trailer. And what the hell happened yeah. to that? I was waiting on that. I didn't, you know, download it or anything. I was thinking about that too. I don't know. Maybe it's just we suck so much in East Kentucky they didn't get it here. Instead, we got the piece of shit hostel too. That's right. Trailer. What the heck? Fuck. Oh god. I had, I had my share of Eli Roth today, I'll say that. Yeah, Eli Roth makes a cameo in that uh, Death Proof too, and I just, uh, that, that almost ruined the whole fucking <laughs> experience. Yep. But, uh, okay, Planet Terror is not your run-of-the-mill zombie movie, really. Uh, it's one of the infected being people, I guess you would say. Infected, uh, you know, it's a contamination movie or something like that, you know. Here's what I want to know about so-called contamination movies. How come isn't all the people in contaminated movies always eat other people if they're not fucking zombies? The contaminated bastards is what they are. They hunger for people. It makes them hunger for people. It's like that one film we watched where there was the government would put microchips into the, like the virus would take over your body as a microchip yeah. and turn you cannibalistic. Yeah. But I was surprised though by Tarantino's episode because it really didn't feel like a grindhouse movie at all. Like, Planet Terror had that, you know, the scratchy, like, wipe your ass look to it, the, the, the lens and stuff, it looked really old and stuff. Whereas, uh, uh, Death Proof really did, it looked like more like just a traditional horror movie that you'd see today, or not really a horror movie, just an action suspense movie that you would see today, you know? Yeah, I thought that uh, Planet Terror was more of like a straight up, I guess what you call a like, you know, search and destroy horror movie where you right. got an outbreak that happens and then you got a group of survivors and they all branch out and try to survive the outbreak. And it was pretty cute. Like, I mean, you had a really good ensemble cast in that movie. I liked Rose McGowan a lot. I thought that was a pretty awesome role. For I liked her. everybody in that movie, yeah. actually. I thought everybody. I thought Josh yeah. Brolin did a really good job in that. Um, Death Proof is. I don't even really know how to describe Death Proof. It's. Not really a horror film, not really an exploitation film. It's more like an action, action yeah. yeah, action drama. Had some great, you know, stunts and shit with the car. Yeah. And uh, I'm thinking the one New Zealand. Woman, she has to be a real. She, stunt yeah, she's a real stunt yeah. woman because I've never seen her before, and she's not. You know, she's she's attractive for around here and everything, but for a big movie <laughs> like that, <Right> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but uh, for a big movie like that, she's a little out of place. So I would that would lead me to believe that she's a. Uh, Really, a stunt woman. I haven't done any research on this, but I'm sure that's the case. Yeah, you would think that because I think she does a lot of stunts in that episode yeah. herself. So yeah. I just can't imagine anybody that's just a regular actress doing that stuff. Anyway, though, I, Death Proof, from what I was listening to the people post on the board and other places, you would have thought that would have been the most boring piece of shit ever, but I really thought it was enjoyable, and unique. Yeah. You know, I've never really seen Kurt Russell play any kind of role as completely like that anymore. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, Kurt Russell's fucking awesome in the movie. Uh, he needs more roles in movies like this, too. I, th I think these movies like this really, you know, it shows his talent, I think. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. 
the trailers, we didn't talk about the preview trailers that right. come in at the beginning of the film <laughs> and in the middle. I swear to God, though, I've heard so much shit about Thanksgiving, but I really like the don't trailer. Yeah. Well, not any, I thought that was fucking hilarious well, because we watch so many movies that have like, you know, don't go in the house, don't answer the phone, and right. don't go in the woods. It's a gimmick. I know the Weinsteins were actually uh, producers of these, these movies and stuff. And I remember, because I, I've heard people talk about this forever, the name of the movie was Don't. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this, has, this is something to do with, or has a little bit of an homage to, uh, there's a burning trailer out there that has that exact same gimmick out there. If you you know, if you're thinking of going in the woods, don't you know. Not the same well, they said, zone, but they the same just sort of gimmick. Where it, yeah. was, it was ripping off all those films you said, like don't answer the phone, don't go in the cellar, you know, don't go in the house. It was like all those yeah. things are in one one little tra trailer. Yeah. Was and awesome. yeah, and the trailer looked hilarious. So it looked exactly like one of those Early '80s English ghost movies. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that's Edgar Wright's trailer. Yeah, that was. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty amazing. I think I liked it better than any of. Them. Thanksgiving was awesome, but I really did like Don't Better. Which just goes to show you that even in a movie like that, Eli Roth can't shine for me. Well, the Thanksgiving trailer. Uh, the reason I enjoyed it so much is because he actually made it look authentic. How how the hell he did that? I have no idea. And Edgar Wright did too. Yeah. But you're talking about these movies like Mother's Day from like the early 80s that were shot on 16 millimeter, and I'm guessing that's what he used to shoot uh, the Thanksgiving trailer. So uh, it looked authentic, looked, you know, something early 80s. That's why I enjoyed it. But all the trailers were pretty good. I was a little, I don't know about Werewolf Men, Women of the SS though. That was. Uh, it was too. I thought it was a little bit too fragmented to even tell anything about it. If it was a good trailer or not. Yeah. Like there was, there were so many. Weird little scenes in it that just didn't fit together well. Yeah, and the opening trailer was actually before the first movie it was Machete. Yeah, that's with with Danny Trejo, which was awesome. And uh, uh, I think that I heard that they shot actually thirty minutes worth of that movie already. I don't know if you know it bombing at the box office this weekend is going to affect it. I probably will. Yeah, you probably never see that. Long, if like we if, length movie. Yeah, if we ever do see it, it might be an extra on the DVD or something, which would be cool that, to see. That freaking machine trailer, that's like classic exploitation, the 70s yeah. style of grindhouse stuff. That was had Cheech true. Marin in it, yeah. too. That was that. But I just want to take this time to urge everybody that hasn't checked the movie out, go fucking support it because... It's a shame that uh, something like this comes along for die-hard exploitation horror fans, and it just doesn't do well. Uh, uh, and maybe word of mouth will help it a little bit. Maybe next week it'll at least go up a little bit. More more people go see it. So yeah, I, I would urge everybody to go check it out. Yeah, every now and then, I mean, we go to a lot of these fucking movies, folks. I mean, we literally go to a movie probably right. At, about every week for the last month we had. And we have to sit through shit like The Hills Have Eyes 2 and Black Christmas and all these horrible horror films just so we can eventually have the privilege to watch a film like this. Yeah. So that's, you know, the best compliment I can pay for is that it did not seem like it was three and a half hours long. You know, I was entertained through the whole thing. I thought both films were great. Definitely go see this. Yeah, and you know, I understand people might be worried about the running time. It doesn't feel it doesn't really feel like it's that long. You're not really bored through the movie at all. If I had one complaint it would be the uh, Tarantino's movie at certain points was a little talky. They talked a little too much. You could have shortened that maybe ten minutes, I think, but hell. I mean it was still like probably the best time I've had in the theater in a long damn time. Yeah. Overall it could have had a, a couple of improvements but a great film. You know, uh, two really good directors, two really good films. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little bit fickle about this, but I like Death Proof a little bit better than Planet Terror, maybe because I've seen so many zombie movies in my life. But both unique. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, what I enjoyed about it was, is it was character driven pretty much, the entire movie. And how, you know, how rare is that in today's horror films? The films uh, in general. There was a couple things I liked about it. Number one is it didn't really follow any kind of like set formula for films. Like a lot of the main characters in the film that you wouldn't expect something to happen to them happens to them. Yeah. And which you kind of can expect that with you know 
these two guys direct you. And that's that's one of the pluses. Another thing is, is they completely like try to come up with something original for the characters. Like, I don't know the last time it is that you saw a woman with a machine gun from a leg, <laughs> but I can't really tell you, you know? Yeah. It's like they had, all the characters had certain attributes that made them unique. And the plot lines were the best part to me because, sure, you got the contaminated outbreak thing, but I thought as far as, like, death proof goes, that was just an amazing idea to do a horror film based around that. Like, stunt work and stunt men that go, that goes insane. And yeah. It was just great. Yeah, I mean, both of the movies were, I enjoyed them both, and, uh, you know, go go check this stuff out. I think, you know, the majority of people are really going to like it. Don't, I'm losing faith in America right now that people are actually going and seeing stupid fucking, like, Blades of Glory and Are We Done Yet? Are you fucking serious? And stuff like that. That come, shit like that comes out every fucking week. That'll be the sequel to that, by the way. How often? Are you fucking serious? Yeah, are, yeah. How often do you get two movies for the fucking price of one? Three fifty. And, uh, yeah, don't come along too often. So, all the horror fans go out there, check out Grindhouse, and be sure to check us out every week at DeadPitch.com.